Do you want to write a masterful story and not just an average one? I believe the best way to learn how to write a story is to learn from other people because it saves you the pain of having to learn it yourself the hard way. So here are 10 powerful storytelling tips from 10 of the most masterful storytellers ever to have existed. And any one of them has the power to transform a story. If you can combine them, then who knows what your story could become. The first piece of advice comes from John Steinbeck who said, if if you're using dialogue, say it aloud as you write, only then will it have the sound of speech. I argue that this is one of the only things that you need to write great dialogue. If it sounds like speech, then it will look good on the page, and I always get my word processor to read aloud my document to me, and I always find mistakes, not just in my dialogue, but all over the place. And you can do this by clicking review and then read aloud in Microsoft Word. The second tip comes from Stephen King, who said, if you don't have time to read, you don't have the time or the tool to write. Simple as that. And Stephen King reads around 70 to 80 books a year. But then I asked myself, why so many? What is the benefit of reading so many books if you forget them a year later? And this is the reason. When you read a lot of books, and I mean a lot, at least 50 a year, then you'll probably forget most of the stories, but slowly you'll build up a mental framework, a structure, or a better word might be an outline of what makes a good story. This is not something that can be taught in a lecture or a blog blog post. The only way to do this is by reading a lot. Right now I read about one to two books a week and the majority are audiobooks. I love audiobooks because they provide the same value as physical books and are a much easier way to read. If you want to be a better storyteller and you don't already listen to audiobooks, you'll probably be fighting against the tide when it comes to writing your own stories. And Audible by far is the best audiobook platform. If you're considering starting it, you can get a free trial in the link in the description. The third piece of advice comes from Anton Chekh. Of. And I probably am pronouncing that wrong, but he said, don't tell me the moon is shining, show me the glint of light on broken glass. Show don't tell is ancient advice, but ask yourself, have you implemented it in your story? One of the best ways you can do this is by using body language and metaphors. For example, which one of these two sentences creates a more vivid image in your head? The first one, he looked at me annoyed. And the second one, he crossed his arms and stared at me like I was a splinter he couldn't pull out. Which one of those created the most vivid image in your head? Probably the second one, right? By showing, it creates a more vivid picture in the reader's mind. This is the whole point of storytelling. The fourth tip is by Ray Bradbury, who said, Quantity produces quality. If you only write a few things, you're doomed. I read a story once about a university photography class, and I don't remember all the details, but it went something like this. The teacher split the class into two groups, group A and group B. In group A, the work of the entire term of each student was judged by one photograph one photograph would decide whether they would pass or fail. In group B, the grade was decided by the quantity of fairly decent photographs that they took. The sheer quantity would determine whether they pass or fail. Which group do you think ended up with the better photographs? In the end, it was group B by far, because through sheer quantity of photographs, their pictures were much better than the single photographs taken in group A. Group A's photographs were actually quite mediocre compared to group B. And I believe this concept can apply to any craft, especially storytelling, that quantity produces quality. So the story can really be summed up in one sentence. The more you do something, the better you will do it. Simple and somewhat obvious, but profoundly true. Tip number five comes from Friedrich Nietzsche. I'm most certainly pronouncing that wrong, but his message was to determine what you want to say before you begin writing your story. Every person has a message that has impacted them, and they want it to influence other people. This piece of advice consists of two questions. The first one is, what is your author's point? And the second one is, how will you express that point? Stories are perhaps the most powerful medium through which we can express ideas. People remember stories, so how can you communicate your message in a story? C.S. Lewis has interwoven his message of Christianity into the Timeless Children's series and allegory, The Chronicles of Narnia. It is easy for children and adults to see Aslan as Jesus. Throughout the story, people read about the timeless teachings of Jesus in a new way. So what is your message? And think about how you can put your message in a story so people can read basically the same message that has been repeated throughout the generations in a new way. The sixth tip is by George Orwell who said, if it is possible to cut a word out, always cut it out.
out. Using too many words slows writing down and the challenge of writing is using as few words as possible to create the biggest emotional impact on the reader. And here are a few examples of words you often don't need that make your writing worse. These words include that, just, then, said, only, really, perhaps, maybe, simply, somehow, almost, seemed, basically, absolutely, actually, slightly, and basically most adverbs. Most of the time, these words can either be replaced by better ones or deleted completely. So the seventh tip is by Rainer Maria Rilke, who is a poet who said, don't compare yourself to anyone else. Bam! What a solid piece of advice! Comparing yourself to more successful authors is one of the worst things that you can do, but the poet Rilke wrote, there is one thing that you should do, go into yourself. All great storytelling comes from the inside out, not from the outside out. If it comes from the outside out, then it will certainly not be part of yourself. It will certainly not feel authentic and real, and it will feel forced. The eighth tip is from Elmore Leonard, who said, I try to leave out the parts that people skip. I think this is one of the most effective ways to improve your story. When I edit my writing, I try to imagine being another person reading it for the first time, and then I ask myself, which parts would I skip? And I basically change those parts. It's basic editing, I guess. But even better, is Stephen King's advice who said ask 10 other people to read your story then ask them to tell you which parts suck if most of the 10 people give the same answer then you know what to change but storytelling is all about testing something to see if it works and if it doesn't work rewrite it and if that doesn't work rewrite it again the ninth tip comes from Will Self who said always carry a notebook and I mean always you never know when a brilliant idea may come short-term memory lasts only about 30 seconds unless you repeat the information again and again in your head, and it's a lot easier to write it down. It doesn't have to be a physical notebook though, I use a notes app on my phone, where I have literally hundreds of ideas written down that I would have forgotten quite easily that have basically saved a lot of aspects of my story, I believe. The tenth tip is inspired by Jesus himself, and it is to create a hidden meaning. Stories with a hidden meaning I consider alpha stories. The power of these stories to influence people is infinite. Jesus said, that's why I tell stories, to create readiness, to nudge the people towards receptive insight. In their present state, they can stare till doomsday and not see it. Listen till they're blue in the face and not get it. That is Matthew 13, 12 to 13. Basically, he's saying some people will understand the hidden meanings behind his stories, and those people will see the truth, but many will not see the hidden meaning. This makes the story more impactful for the few who do understand them, in the same way that only a few people really understand Narnia when they read it for the first time. It is my personal opinion that it is better for a story to impact a few in a drastic way than many in an average way. And this is what Jesus did through his stories. Those who understood them were changed and even transformed, and we can do that through stories ourselves. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to join a realm of storytellers and master the craft of storytelling, consider subscribing and hitting the bell, and I hope that I can help you in some way with your story and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.